All right, so again, welcome uh, community champions. We are session two for facilitation design uh, training for this week. Our agenda, one more time for you. Uh, we went over this Tuesday, but just so as a reminder of what we're doing today, we'll do our community building check-in this morning. Um, we're going to do a quick review of the intake form that you were introduced to on Tuesday. And then you're gonna spend the majority of the time today diving in and practicing filling out that intake form and designing a session. We'll get you a break in there and then we'll review some examples uh, that the staff has for you. Um, you will get your homework instructions and then we'll do our closing reflections before we adjourn for this week. All right, so as a reminder, facilitation design to gain an understanding of what design means and how to ensure you show up fully prepared to deliver an engaging session that is inclusive for all participants. So we want to make sure that we are meeting uh, with our community members, our clients, and ensuring that we're reading, meeting those rational and experiential aims, which we'll talk about a little bit more, so that we are designing an appropriate facilitation, that we're using the right tools, that we're staying within the context and the scope of what it is that we're trying to accomplish when we're having these facilitated sessions. And for our check-in. So we just want to know, how are you showing up today? So just a couple of words, how you're showing up. And then also, if you could share one thing that you recall from mm -hmm. session one on Tuesday. So we're going to go ahead and do our go around. And we will start with Rachel, then Vinay, then Gwendolyn. Oh, I'm showing up um, curious today um, and anxious to learn this process. Uh, one thing I recall from session one um, is, I guess, just getting more details about the um, uh, rational and experiential aim. And I think I'm really starting to understand it better. I'm showing up, uh, feeling a little behind since I missed session one and ready to learn and try to catch up with you guys. <laughs> and I'm complete. Thank you, Vinay. Uh, Gwendolyn, Kathy, and Donna. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm um, showing up this morning, just a little curious and anxious to kind of get some more understanding of the rational and the experimental, just digging a little more deeper into some understanding. And what I recall uh, from the other day was basically um just getting a full picture of what we kind of was going over with the experimental aims and the rational aims and stuff like that so i hope i guess that answers it a little bit for me thank you gwendolyn kathy donna tiffin sorry <laughs> there we go um i'm a little anxious not as anxious as i was on tuesday um just trying to put all of this together. Sometimes, you know, doing it in two different sections, it's a little bit, I think, more difficult sometimes for me to understand how it all works together. Um, and then I'm feeling a little bit better about um, uh, just, just the whole understanding of all this. So. Thank you, Kathy. Donna, Tiff, and Diane. Good morning, everyone. I'm showing up today with great expectations. And one thing I recall from session one is just having the ability to lay eyes on the facilitation development. I'm still in my learning stage, so I'm very excited about it. I'm complete. Thanks, Donna. Tiff and Diane, Lanaya. Good morning. Um, I'm showing up today. I'm ready to add on to what we learned yesterday, kind of the... Um, you know, keep the repetition and repetition helps you to continue to gain knowledge and help things to sink in better. And the one thing I kind of keep reminding myself is to, you know, be realistic in, you know, what you can accomplish in the time that you have with your community partners. And as you're designing your facilitation outline to keep that in mind. Um, and I am complete. 
I'm showing up today a little curious of what we're gonna uh, learn today. Um, the rational aim is probably one of my weakest points. So uh, try to put together uh, everything that we learned yesterday and just looking forward to today. Thank you, Diane. Lanaya, Kimberly, Sue Ellen. So I am showing up excited and yeah, basically just excited. And I recall from session one, the difference between the rational experiential aims, because that's something I wasn't really understanding until the last session. Thank you, Lanaya, Kimberly, Sue Ellen, and Brigia. Hi, I'm uh, excited to implement um, the rational and experimental um, aims and uh, ready to put it into practice. I'm complete. Thanks, Kimberly, Sue Ellen, and Brigia Tangia. Good morning. I am showing up exhausted, if I'm telling the truth. I'm about six days from my induction date, so uh, in the home stretch. But uh, I missed half of the session one due to a doctor's appointment. And when I left, we were talking about kind of reading the room, what your red, yellow, blues, green, what they kind of need in a meeting. Thank you, Sue Ellen. And Brigia, Tangia, and Megan. Good morning, everyone. I'm showing up excited to be here. I apologize for missing session one. I was under the weather. But I'm excited about seeing you all's growth with the facilitation development. And I'm complete. Thank you, Tanjia, Megan, Becca. Good morning. I'm showing up um, ready to put it all together and ready to uh, have more conversation about the rational and experimental aim. And um, what I recall from yesterday was brainstorming because uh, I used it yesterday in my team lead meeting and also understanding, like uh, it was said before, what are the expectations, what are your time limits, and what can you fit into those time limits? Thank you, Tanjia. Megan, Becca, Karen. Um, I'm showing up a little anxious. Uh, one thing that I recall was avoiding a one-size-fits-all approach and then the personality types. Thanks, Megan. Becca, Karen, Jamie. Good morning, everyone. I am showing up excited and ready to hit the ground running. And one thing that I recall from session one is how each of our colors are reflected and how we facilitate and how that also kind of dictates what information we need in order to feel empowered to make decisions. And I'm complete. Thanks, Becca. Karen, Jamie, Robbie. Becca just once, so I'm going to just hop right in. Uh, I am showing up a little bit scattered, but excited for this training today. One thing I recall is seeing the growth of the champions and kind of revisiting some of this content that um, we haven't really focused on so heavily lately. So it's good to kind of flex those muscles and uh, see your questions and grow and I'm complete. Thank you, Jamie, Robbie. Good morning. Um, I'm showing up motivated and excited to learn more um, as this is, you know, I'm still in my learning journey a bit here. And um, one thing I recall is just learning how to incorporate and kind of starting the incorporating the lum our luminous spark and our colors into um, how we facilitate and how the people who are in the room, what they need to learn um, and, and know for a good facilitation. So um, I'm looking forward to learning more about that as we go further. Thank you, Jamie and Robbie. Um, I'm showing up today, like Karen, a little bit scattered, but I'll be okay. And um, one thing I recall from session one is seeing how this tool and this whole training session has really stretched you as champions and stretched your learning and um, how it's going to be useful for you in the future. Thank you. And Angie, how are you showing up this morning? I'm showing up very frustrated from my Jack Jack who cannot stop barking and now it's thundering. So hopefully I'll be better on a moment here when he gets used to all the sounds outside. So apologize for Jack Jack. All right. And I'm showing up just excited to be here with all of you again today, um, feeling a bit like it's Friday and it's throwing me off, um, but uh, excited for another great session. 
uh, and confident that uh, you all will walk away uh, feeling better after getting some time to practice. Sometimes just getting in and digging your heels in and applying it yourselves does so much for learning. I don't know if you remember um, or have been shown that funnel of learning of you remember, you know, 10% of what you see and 15% of what you hear and, you know, goes up and up and up. And once you get to that um, doing portion, um, it jumps, uh, bumps your learning up to about 60%. And so uh, for those of you feeling a little bit anxious, uh, today should be a really good day to help reinforce that learning for you all. So with that, I am going to hand it over to Angie. All right. To um, do some review. Yes. So one thing that I I'm excited for all of you. And when we started designing this cohort journey is the opportunity for you all to get to chance to practice and really design. I remember when I first started doing my facilitation on my own, I was running a coalition. I knew I needed to do this. I took all the courses and then I got in front of my, uh, my upcoming event. And I was like, ah, what do I do? I'm not sure where to start. And nothing made wow. sense. And my one go-to resource was this book. Who's got this book? You should have it very handy. I'm hoping you have, how many of you have it within an arm's reach of where you're at right now? Good. That's good. Um, and you'll notice I have mine earmarked and, and tabbed and any of us that are doing lots of facilitation should have that because this is a cheat sheet for y'all. When I couldn't figure out where to start this book, is your resource. Sometimes you just need a few words to get you started in the right direction. This book has it. When a couple of you are saying, I'm not real sure and clear about rational experiential aims, this book starts on the left-hand column with a rational experiential aim. And since we have a little bit of time before we actually go into designing, I want to have you guys use this as a resource. So I, I told the um, staff, I'm going to throw an audible at you because I want you to be able to use this book. Um, th this wasn't in our training, but because we have the time, I'm going to give you the gift of exploring this. So we're going to spend about 10 minutes um, in a small group having you open up this book. Now I'll tell you how I use it. If you want to really read the front part of this book, it has the theory of what the whole conversation method, why it is the way it is. But the very great place, and this is almost broken in my book, is the table of contents. Um, they have a hundred conversations laid out for you. So just scrolling through and looking at the table of contents, you're going to come across one that here's one that says reviewing the end of the day. So I flipped page 57. I need a conversation. How does this fit my conversation? Let's look at the rational um, objective here to de develop a shared understanding of what happened during the day. What do I want people to know, understand, or decide? Yeah, that kind of fits. I want them to review what happened today and really understand that. Experiential lane is to celebrate the accomplishments of the day. Does that fit for what I want? You bet. Okay, so then I'm going to look at these questions. Do they work for me? Maybe, maybe not. I can adjust them from there. But really, I want what we want to focus on today is looking at those different um, rational experiential aims. Um, and so I want you in your breakout rooms to go and open up the index of this book. And even if you don't have yours handy, whoever's in your breakout room will have one and just go explore what those rational experiential aims are. And when we come back, then we'll have each breakout room, have a spokesperson of what you discovered as you actually cultivated the ideas inside of this book. Okay, so open up the index, just go through and look at the different conversations, find one that stands out to you. Turn to that page and explore it with your group, focusing really on the rational experiential aim, how that might help you in designing a conversation for the work that you, you do on a regular basis. Questions? All right. Robbie, are you ready? Angie, for I want to add that we are, if you have a center staff in your group, they are intentionally trying to sit back a little bit so that they are not leading this conversation. You all have the skills and books to be successful in this. So we believe in you. <laughs> can I ask a quick question? Sure. So we can pick any topic in out of here? Yeah, I mean, think about your work that you're doing. And, and I've picked ones that are kind of like not necessarily, but maybe kind of close. 
And then it's like, wow, I could probably use this in this situation. So share with each other how you might use one of those conversations. I want you to dive in there and use it as a resource. It can't substitute for the work that you need to do, but it can get you launched into the right direction. When you don't have any place to start, it's kind of like a blank piece of paper. Sometimes you don't know what word to put on the page. This is one way to get you started in the right direction. Because I don't know, I've maybe shared with you before, I'm not an objective level person. When it comes to designing the conversations, I can look at the conversations that are there with the objective level questions. And then I can like, that I can use. And so I'll, I'll use it in many different ways, but just explore the book. We want you to get used to this resource because it's a valuable tool that you have. I bet you've underutilized it up to this point. So that's the main key of this um, breakout room. All right. All right. Well, let's find out what you discovered in your breakout rooms. Hopefully that was helpful to open up that book and, and read through some of those. Um, which room wants to go first? Um, there's only three rooms, so we'll have a spokesperson from one of the rooms talk first. Mm -hmm. I'll go it's first. Oh. Uh, it Sanjia. was Sanjia, uh, <laughs> Kimberly, Diane, and uh, Megan in my group. Uh, I was the one with the book, but anyway, I started off, uh, we recognized that I used my book yesterday for uh, a team lead meeting that I had, and it was beneficial because it kept us on track and it kind of gave me the information, the questions that I chose, because it, the team leads had turned in their team meeting uh, report, it gave me insight as to what questions needed to be asked in order to, for us to move forward in the meeting. So it was beneficial. We all realized that it, it, the, the book and looking at it and, and choosing, you know, our rational and experiment, experimental aim and our, our questions uh, kind of gave us more focus on what we, we needed to accomplish in the meetings and how to stay on track and move the meeting forward. And also if there was any confusion while we were having it to be able to uh, get to an end point and what are our next steps. So we all thought that it would be beneficial for us to use it. It was beneficial for me. Um, some other community champions uh, used it when they're in a bind, but they won't want to start using it more um, as to help them be more efficient and move forward in their meetings that they're having. But we found it beneficial. I found it beneficial uh, in using it, and I've used it in more ways than just my team lead meeting yesterday. So um, I just thought about, you know, just keeping things on track and not having a meeting for 30 minutes and it lasting an hour and a half because everybody's all over the place and you know, speaking. So it gives you like, um, when I use page 61, it gave me like, you know, time minutes. So I did say, okay, can you give, can, you know, group number one, give, you know, two minutes, a recap of what you guys have accomplished so far. And then we moved to the, to the next. So it was, it's beneficial. Uh, our group decided it's beneficial for us as well as being able to, um, choose questions in, at each level according to what your uh, personalities are in the room so that everybody gets an opportunity to share and be able to, um, to be a part and feel encouraged if there's any chaos or uh, misconceptions to be able to feel encouraged and supported through whatever that meeting is that you're having. And so just to build on that a little bit, Tanjia, if we were going to, and anyone can answer this, if we really needed to have some of those differences really ironed out, what level of those questions would we be asking at? Where, where do we take our personal? Um, would it be interpretive? Nope, that's where we're getting new ideas from what everyone said. Okay. So it'd be reflective. Yes. What I saw as good, what I, what I saw as a struggle, what I saw as a challenge, what I saw as an opportunity, all of those kind of eye reflections are happening there. And if you've got a lot of contention, you're going to want to build out your design with more there. Um, and, you know, the beautiful thing about this book, like you're saying to Gia, is giving you that structure that we've been talking about all the way through conversations that matter about how to really design a conversation. And the conversation itself will take those meetings from an hour and a half to 30 minutes. And mm -hmm. that's what we're looking to do today is really um, structure that conversation in that meeting so that you are more targeted on what you're doing. So thank you for um, your reflection. Anyone else from your room want to add anything? Hi. 
Um, so our uh, breakout room was myself, Kathy, Megan, and Gwendolyn. And Kathy and myself each had the similar um, meeting that we're preparing for. We're gonna be meeting with some physicians, um, preparing an agenda for the meeting. Um, and the, the purpose of the meeting is to talk about the care spectrum. So we're getting a lot of our specialists together our ER physicians, our hospitalists, and uh, meeting with them about what patients can we uh, admit, what patients can we transfer. Our goal is to admit more patients to the hospital. So um, on page 78, we would be using um, the preparing the agenda for the meeting, uh, focus conversation, and the rational and experiential aims are very appropriate um, you know, for this meeting. So we, we all decided that this is a really good resource for us um, for this type of meeting. Mm -hmm. um, Megan doesn't have her book yet. So she's gonna be reaching out to y'all to, um, to get her book. She's new to the cohort, she said. Um, and then I know after our, my uh, community priority action planning workshop on page 169, reflecting on the day, um, that focus conversation was very helpful in preparing uh, the very end of the day conversations and developing the rational and experiential aims and then developing those ORD questions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And when you find yourself in a bind and you realize I have not done my due diligence and done my homework, I have found myself just taking a photocopy of like the reflection at the end of the day. And if there are certain questions that I know I need to develop out, I'll add them on the margin. Of, I mean, this is a shortcut. It's not the ideal. I'm telling you how to, you can cheat the system sometimes and it's and center staff's probably going to yell at me later, but you know, <laughs> not the best practice, but we all get in those binds where we're sure. at a, like, I didn't, I didn't, I know I should have done better. Well, it's okay. You know, now you should do better, but in the, in the short term, you know, you've got a resource you can go to and, and either have it, you know, bookmarked and take the whole book, or I've got photocopies that I bring along to of uh, certain pages, like the end of the day. If I'm, I'm like, I did not prepare my end of the day conversation. I'll just pull it out of my handy dandy little notebook binder that I carry everywhere with me. And I've got that with me. And then I will add some questions in there so that it is relevant to our conversation, of course, that we were working on. It's not a one size fit all. I think you guys said that in your opening, but it is a good framework to kind of let you work with and manipulate the questions to fit what you are, what you really need to accomplish out of that. So, all right. Anyone else? Um, I, I, can I just add one thing on the reflecting of the day um, conversation? It's interesting when you sit in any type of meeting, if, if you're facilitating it or if you're participating in it and you look at the reflection um, uh, reflecting on the day portion and walk through that meeting. You know how there are times when we come out with, oh, we have takeaways or we have a to-do list. Um, using the reflecting of the day process, kind of going through what that meeting was in your next meeting, even if it's not even related to what you were reflecting on, kind of gives you that groundwork to be more efficient in your next meeting for whatever it is so you might not have a two-page list of to-dos, but you can accomplish those prior to by planning it out and, and walking through the process. Mm -hmm. That's kind of just my, my thought. And That's theory. a good point. Yep. And that last question, what's unfinished from today that I need to pick up for tomorrow? That ownership. Mm -hmm. of, a lot of times I'll have that as a, a go-around at the final question. What, what did we leave unfinished that you are willing to pick up and do before our next meeting? Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing worse as much time, the least amount of time we all have in our day to sit in a meeting that is just not productive. Yeah. 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 And, and now it's why I jumped on to the facilitation methods when I was doing coalition work. So over 20 years, for those that don't know it, I, for over 20 years, I was working coalitions in the state of Iowa. And it was when I came across these facilitated methods, it went from everything coming back to me as the coordinator to the coalition members around the table, those community champions or the community members that came to our meetings. They felt by having that goal and experience out up front, so the rational aim and the experiential aim up front, 
They knew why they were coming to the meeting. And at the very end, we asked what their part was. So the D level question is, what's your part before we meet again? It flipped everything from feeling that I don't have a place at the table by clearly um, outlining the goal or the rational aim. Um, and then the experiential aim is what I wanted them to feel like they were engaged and part of it. And then by going through the process and ending with that D level question, they knew what they needed to do to have their part in their role. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Anything else from your group? No, now that Rachel and I know we're working on the same project, maybe we can do it <laughs> together. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> mention, we say together is better. And I don't know. Oh, yes. <laughs> certainly is. And I and that's one of the things I think about these resources, too, is it, it's something that's already there for you. Just like what you were given the gift of the design on, on Friday um, or Friday, two days ago, whatever day it was, two days ago. I, you don't have to recreate the wheel. You can start with something. So, all right, our last group. Jamie Linias, Ellen Tiffin, and Benet. Uh, we went through and kind of um, looked at some of the different groups. I mentioned. Um, uh, Kind of you know, since you kind of bringing the book back in, um, you know, looking at the um, for me B nine, which was organizing an in house service group. Um, I'll be uh, taking our C suite through, uh, facilitating a meeting with them. It was supposed to be in, in April, but it got pushed back now to mid May um, for looking at um, building a strategic plan for our telehealth programs. And so um, I think I'm going to go back and look at my agenda now that I've got some time since we didn't have the meeting and, and use this and see if there's anything that I need to adjust um, and, and also look at you know, preparing my agenda for the meeting and just see if there's anything I need to tweak um, since I have the opportunity to do that now since we didn't have the meeting um, and just see if there's anything that kind of um, I can gleam from this, because um, I'll be honest with you, I didn't pull my book out. I was using more of just the resources from the center and, and from the boot camp, um, and now going back and using the book and using this, and plus having this refresher course um, and having that go through and just having my CPA PW meeting and doing all of that, seeing what changes I would make um, before having this facilitated conversation with our C-suite about really what do we want to do with our um, telehealth program and, and what is it currently. And, but I think too, our, most of our discussion was really about the uh, rational aim and the experimental aim. And, um, you know, still kind of struggling with that because we kind of all mentioned that, some of us mentioned that, you know, it's our natural tendency to want to make it a question, you know? And I said, when I was developing mine, I started with a question and then I would take that question and make it a statement um, because my natural tendency is just, I want to make it a question. And that is like my biggest, one of my bigger struggles is, is trying to write that into more of a statement. Um, and so um, and so the others can can jump in because uh, that's kind of where we were, our most of our conversation went from there. Any others? What I like about what you said, Tiffany, you know, if you look at the rational aim or rational objectives, aim, objective, goal, what do you want them to know, understand, or decide? Mm -hmm. That's just keep that in mind. It's interchangeable, those words. So the rational um, objective on page 79 for B9 is to take the first steps in setting up the special group. It's exactly what you're talking about. We're going to be organizing a group to focus on this project. So one way that you use this book is to look at that. And does that match what I'm hoping to go towards? Mm -hmm. If that does, let's read on. Because of that rational aim isn't necessarily the rational objective is what it says here. If that doesn't fit of where you're headed, then maybe the questions aren't going to be the right one. Go back to the drawing board, start going back through and look at your index again. But that seems to really fit. And then mm -hmm. when you go with the experiential aim, what do you want them to get out of that is to generate excitement in um, prominent, prominent for the initiating of the group. So getting them excited to get that started exactly where you're headed with that, right? So it seems like a good fit. So one thing I'm taking out of what you're saying is you really looked at those two things. And if those two things don't fit, do go back to that index and find the right one. And then mm -hmm. use the rest of it as a guide. 
Yes. All right. Anyone else from your group? With that, Angie, can I, can I add that I know we have a lot of prescribed trainings for these champions, but I don't want you to think of this like a college course where you are being tested on this content. Right. Our main goal is that you are getting the experience and you're confident and you can sustain this after this program is done. So if you are not confident in AIMS or any other things that have been taught thus far, that's why we have those Q&A times. And if the Q&A times don't work for you, we want you to connect with us and we will be happy to schedule some additional time for either a one-on-one -on -one training or if there's a couple of you that want to practice these, our main goal is that you use the resources that you have and you talk to each other, you talk to us. We want you to be comfortable with this. So please keep that in mind and don't think of this so much as a test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a, a really good point, Karen, is that you guys are getting your toolbox. Not only are you opening up a toolbox and putting tools in it, but now you're getting today, you're getting those tools out of that box and actually playing with them. And so that toolbox doesn't go away once you're done with this you will forever have these tools at your disposal. And it may be something that you're doing outside of here that's connected in your community on a personal level. It may be that you're doing it with center work. These tools are good for anyone that has to interact with people, right? And y'all doing that in different levels. Um, and so just know that you're getting a gift of, of time today to really get in the sandbox and play. That's where we're headed. Um, when you were in breakout rooms, I asked the center staff, you know, how many of you have your book in handy and whatever. So why don't you all tell how you use these tools and what your toolbox looks like? I can go first. Uh, we were talking about ensuring that all of you have books and a couple of us had more than one book. And I said, I actually need my couple books because I have the desk book. And then I have the travel book that comes with me for every workshop that I'm facilitating. So even though I have maybe a 10 to 20 page facilitation printed out that I'm going to speak to, I still wanna be prepared with this in the chance that I need to pivot in a, in a situation and give everybody a break and kind of redesign something spur of the moment. So it really helps me feel confident that in any scenario, I am ready for the conversation. Well, I'll go next. Um, so I do keep my book as well. Like earlier this week, I was having a difficult, difficult conversation with a CEO. So in preparation for that meeting, I kind of looked through the book to ensure that I had the right questions to ask this particular person. And even just a quick story. So I was going to a state of course with 2019. And we were afraid that they weren't going to have a lot of community engagement, even though we had already traveled to the organization. So me and my coworker, we just sat together and came up with a focused conversation that night. So we're always utilizing this book, utilizing the things that we learn, because you never know when you might have to come up with a conversation on the fly for any type of situation. All right. And I am complete. Thank you. All right. Well, let's get back to our slide deck and um, back on our agenda. So I uh, hopefully you found that useful. And um, one question for center staff, if they do not have a book, I've had a couple of people message me, how do they go about getting a book? So if you do not have a book, could you please email either me or Robbie your address and we'll try to get that sent out to you all as soon as possible. There you go. Awesome. Great resource. All right. So we're going to go we went to that detour so that you have at your disposal some um, material to work with as we go into designing. You will be going into your intake form that Karen um, demonstrated for you uh, yesterday. And so with that, um, we really want you to get on those aims and just don't get hung up on the word aims or the words. Um, I remember when I first started doing this rational aim, what in the heck is rational aim? Remember the three words I told you yesterday. What do you want to know, understand, or decide? What do you want the group to know, understand, or design? decide? You might want to think of it as a goal. The book refers to an objective. So what are you getting out of the meeting? If, if you want to put in simple terms, what are people wanting to get out of the meeting? Then um, the experiential aim, and I, I just want to do a little correction. It's not the experiment, it's experiential, and meaning that what do people want to experience as part of showing up at the meeting? When they leave the meeting, how are they going to feel or be different? 
And so those are the two things that we're going to focus on to. Um, a couple of things that you want to pay attention to on the form. So you want to click one more time. Uh, the top part where you see the topic is just really kind of just brainstorming um, all the things that you know about the meeting. You remember how Karin was inter interviewing the stakeholders, your community um, partners that were coming together yesterday, and you all were giving her some thoughts and she just was kind of typing free flow in there. So that top area is to really kind of pay attention to some um, who who's going to be showing up. Uh, what's kind of the ratio of the power dynamics that may be there? What do we need to think about with the stakeholders who are going to be there? How many people are going to be? Do we have a location? All those details and things like that, you want to make sure you kind of get a descriptive of what's going to happen with your community joint partners. Um, and from that, that will help you formulate what you are going to get to with your rational and your experiential aim. Uh, you may actually have it already written in that top area, and it could be simply a cut, copy, and paste it down below. It may be a combination of the things that you brainstormed in that top area, but um, don't overthink this. Make it be what you want them to know, understand, or decide. That is the simplest key I can give you. Uh, and then when you get those parts down, it's thinking about that audience, right? So if we want them to know, understand, or decide, have we thought about who's gonna be attending this meeting? When you really tease out that goal, you may be thinking of a, a community joint partner that might not have been thought of before. And you know, we're talking about, you know, um, uh, I'm trying to think of a scenario. Um, I only can think of clean water because I've been in Kentucky for so long. Uh, <laughs> A situation, well, uh, one thing that comes to mind when uh, a few cohorts ago was about a parade that went in front of uh, uh, a care center during COVID to bring up mental health spirits. So if you're talking about mental health issues, who's some of those key community joint partners that might need to be present um, that really have a vested stake in that? And maybe you need some pastoral um, representation, you might not have thought of that. Um, you know, who else are you thinking about that might be a good partner that you, that has something that needs to be present. Um, and then the date and time of where your location will be. So with that, um, what else am I missing? We are intentionally not talking about step three right now because in breakout time, we're gonna really be focusing on step one and two in the intake form. All right, so we have three topics. You kind of got a preview of what you're gonna be talking about if you saw the titles of your breakout rooms. Um, there'll be three links put in the chat box for three different forms. If you're in room one, you're talking about, um, and that would be Donna, Gwendolyn, Kathy, Megan, and Rachel are talking about coordinating and promoting resources to the community. So you're gonna brainstorm around that. You're gonna create a session design over the next couple, over the next two months, basically in June, we'll complete this. But today, just really focusing on what would people wanna know, understand or decide about that and what will be the experience of them walking away. That's all we're doing in this next breakout session. Um, group two, and that one had Jamie, Lanaya, Sue Ellen, and Tiffany and Vinay. That's re-engaging the group to complete action planning document. So you've gotten started on it. Karen, you want to explain a little bit more context on that? Um, just like we demonstrated on Tuesday, we want you to start in that same order, kind of talking aloud to each other, sharing ideas in the, the notes section at the top and building out with that your aims that we've just practiced. Um, Robbie's put in the chat box, the Google Docs, so you're not struggling with what your topic is. Your topic is assigned, and this will um, end up being what we facilitate in small groups. If you've seen your June invite for the 20th and the 22nd, you will facilitate the focus conversation for the full group, so you feel the weight of what it's like to be a facilitator with the questions that you guys have designed. Um, we do want you to think through all of these different parts and practice what it's like to start from an idea or a concept and um, come up with real agendas and real scripts that you want to speak to 
and assigning parts to each other eventually. But focus your time today on step one and two. We can see what's being typed in the Google Docs. So if you are pause for typing for quite a while, uh, we may pop in there and see if we can help move you guys along. Does anybody have questions? I'm just wondering about the context of the topic areas um, is what I'm wondering mostly if you have questions about your topic areas. So the third group is gonna be coming back together to discuss a progressive action that has been taken place so far in the progress there. So you have three topic areas that are put in the chat box. Any questions about the context of that? So stay within those lanes to create a con the rational aim and the experiential aim just on that. So kind of brainstorm what you'd be talking about. And then from that, create that, what you want them to know, understand, or decide, and what their experience is going to be as being part of that session design. That's all you need to focus in on at this first breakout. Okay. So if we pull up that document that's in the message um, and we type in it. Yes. That's what you want us to do. All yep. right. You will be working as a team and uh, collectively, and you will continue to work as this team come in June when we come back together. So this becomes your team project. Okay, good question. Any other questions before we go to the breakout room? How long on the breakout rooms? I missed that. Yeah, let's go ahead and look at 45 minutes and see where we're at. Um, okay. Sounds good. Okay. And rooms are open. Well, we can we can go first. We'll, we'll put our... All right. And so you're in which group? Group one. one. All right. And our topic is coordinate and promote resources to the community. And so we started to brainstorm, but we got a little bit too granular. And Andy stepped in and helped us take a look at this big picture, high level, instead of. Um, Instead of defining what tools would be uh, to promote the resources, we started with, you know, flyers and social media, et cetera. But we didn't want, Angie suggested that we shouldn't define the methods because then we would limit ourselves into probably a productive meaning of collaboration. So um, we brainstormed and put tools to promote resources to the community engage community partners and local health care organizations and um, community-wide accessibility. Again, those were our brainstorming um, items. Um, we actually wrote our ration, um, rational aim by, um, I don't know if, if anybody else, Gwendolyn, if you want to take over, but um, the rational aim was to engage community partners to identify tools and resources to promote to the community and to provide accessibility of resources to the community. I don't have anything for me, um, and I didn't print it because I was described and everything. If I can barely remember, so you, um. You, you're on the second portion of the two. So with the rational aim, as we know, is to know, understand, and decide. We had gotten to, um, what did you leave off at, Kathy? There we go. Thank you, whoever did that. Okay, just move it up. I can't barely see it. Okay, we um did our experimental aim, is that where we're at now? I don't wanna be jumping the gun. So Kathy talked about what your rational aim was and that was to do this. Right, okay, we do, yeah, because that was a start. I'm gonna help you all with this, is experiential, not experiment, we're not experimenting, experiential, okay? Experiential, <clears throat> aim. experiential. I had a hard time saying that. Yeah, experiential aim. Um, I was saying that the other second part was kind of like a double, a double statement um but community partners um we wanted them to feel that our experiential aim is to make them feel unified noticed and their voices heard that we figured was very important in order to grab and keep their attention and everything they need to be felt like they're noticed voice 
voices are heard and they're unified. Um, the other part, I was I thought it was a little double of the of, of what it's saying. Community partners are stakeholders, and we want them to be fully engaged. So, so Gwendolyn, this is when you had to leave for your little uh, quick when you got off for a second. But I think what we were doing here is we couldn't come up with okay. the overall experimental experimental aim, and mm -hmm. so. We kind of brainstormed. We knew what we wanted to say. We want to build trust, obviously, amongst our community partners. Mm -hmm. So we all, all the community partners feel that they have um, a voice in pulling together the resources to um, deliver to the community. Um, and so when we wrote down, you know, of course, the community partners, um, we wanted to feel unified noticed and voices heard I mean, um, and, and engaged. So we were trying to come up with like connect by collaborating common goals, which will increase trust to deliver comprehensive resources to the community that may have captured it, may not have, or connect by working uh -huh. together to achieve similar goals, which will boost trust to help the community receive complete resources. So we did, we, we put those down because we didn't, we didn't pick exactly which one we were going to use as our statement. Right, but I was just saying it sounds like a double negative, because, I mean a double because community partners are stakeholders. That's why I've always did, that's all. So the other part, um, connecting by collaborating common goals, like you said, with increased trust, you know, and all of that is what this experiential aim is. And what we want to do is definitely increase the trust to deliver the comprehensive resources to the community and to connect those working together to achieve the similar goals and that will boost trust and help the community receive their complete resources that we know they would need. Okay. So can I just say one thing before you say that, Angie? I think we had an, um, a little bit of confusion with community partners and community that what we're trying to do is bring the actual partners together. Ones that we've identified that have resources to offer to the community. Because I think somebody had made the comment that community partners are the community. Well, we're all part of the community, but we're trying to segment and, and obtain community partners with resources that we can bring together to distribute to the community. So the community has a one-stop shop, basically, or you know, a resource to go to. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's kind of where, when Gwendolyn was talking, we kind of got off on community partners, stakeholder, you know. I will defer to the center staff to kind of help define that. So you, I'll give you a moment to think on that. One thing I just want to point out is. Um, I really, and anyone else weigh in, I think this last one is a great rational aim because it's what you want them to know, understand, or decide. We want them to be able to work together for similar goals, to boost trust. You can say this next one here, connect. We want them to feel connected by the collaboration of common goals. So experiential aim, experiential, that word means it's what they're experiencing. So um, connect is an action. So the Rational aim is really about what you're going to do. Um, and the experiential aim is how they're gonna feel or be different as a result of coming together. And so just a couple words, will change that into an experiential aim if you want it there. I, I really do love that last one as a rational aim though, because from what you're talking about, it seems like that could go up to the rational section. Well, we have to give credit to Megan who says she's totally lost and she's trying to catch up because she's done a phenomenal job at stepping up to the plate and catching on very quickly. So she needs the credit for that. Well, let's Thanks. give her a little toot toot. Nice job. So and just the clarifying on the community partners and the stakeholders thing. So this would be a conversation that you're gonna facilitate with your community partners. Some of you might call them stakeholders. In general, we call them community partners because sometimes our stakeholders are those we go more intentionally into like a memorandum of understanding for yeah. a, a, an official coalition as like a nonprofit. So 
you might call them stakeholders, but this is a smaller group of individuals community partners that you are partnering with as an organization to push those resources out to a larger audience. If we just said community, we could have your entire town show up and you're not going to get all your voices heard. All right. So we had clarification there. Good job. Um, and just so everyone understands how the change of the words there on the experiential aim could change it from being a very much uh, what you want to know, understand, or decide, rational, the goal, objective, because the right now where it says you're going to one of our goals is to really connect the collaborating by collaborating those goals. Um, if you want them to feel connected, that belongs in this section. So go ahead and adjust that if you'd like, however you'd like. And if we're ready, we'll move on to the second one. So it's to Tiffin, Lanaya, Sue Ellen. Vinay lost power. She had to leave. And then I was in that group. Um, well, we went through and um, Linnea and um, and I are, you know, both have had some re-engagement issues of our community partners. Um, mine was at my CPAPW. I didn't quite have, I had some no-shows. Um, and so reach, you know, trying to think of how to get them into the three work groups that were created from that workshop. And so we kind of talked just briefly about that first, like, you know, um, and then started to brainstorm um, the uh rational and um, experimental experiment exper don't I'm just gonna call it the EA so I'm gonna I'm just gonna abbreviate so the EA and um, uh, Jamie took us through kind of just just starting with just words you know and just uh, what are some of the words in those um, areas and then from that formulated our statements and um, so um, and what we wanted to accomplish within that and um, uh, how to get those community joint partners re-engaged in um, those work groups or those areas that we needed them to be a part of again. So uh, we just, so like, you know, we just kind of give an example uh, when we started working on our um, RA, um, I wrote down some of the things we talked about, you know, strengths, resources, impact, um, important, um, clarifying. So these were all just words we threw out. And then from that, creating our um, rational aim. Okay. So who would like to take it from there? What'd you come up with? Swellen? Anaya? I can. <laughs> um, we figured out what our rational aim was, and it's to clarify the importance of community partners, resources and strengths in the work group. So we wanted to make sure everybody understood the reason to be engaged, the, the importance of that. Um, and then for our experiential aim. Good job. <laughs> you all saying that before the end Good of this. Job. <laughs> Um, we wanted to empower work groups to continue towards their goal and feel connected to the work group's impact on the community. So we basically wanted people to feel excited and empowered what they can do for the group and why they're actually there. Right. Good, powerful, um, emotional words there. They empower, um, feel connected. Those are the things you want to focus in on that experiential aim um, because you could you know, if you didn't have in power, it would become then more of a the rational lane, right? Workers will continue to work towards their goals. Great, that's what they're gonna do. But we want them to feel empowered. And so one reason why that's so important to tease that out during this formation, these are the building blocks. These are the foundation to what everything else is. So you wanna leave space now to have questions that let them feel empowered, that really do, um, you know, show the importance of uh, the resources and the strengths coming together. So as we go into the next step, as we start building this out, you're going to lean back into that as the equation that you're going to say, are we asking questions that will let them feel empowered? Are we asking questions that shows the importance of our resources and strengths coming together? So good job. Any other? I think that with this group, like from just working with them and trying to come up with this, there is this natural tendency, like we were saying earlier, to make these questions. And instead of doing that, 
looking at it almost like a Mad Lib, like what are the things we really want to come across and taking those words. And then we just made sentences out of them until it sounded like that's really where we want to be. So breaking it down really, you know, just into verbs Mm -hmm. was super helpful, I think. I love that. This brainstorming section, the first part here is the Mad Lib. Exactly. And I, I have to say that when Jamie mentioned that, that kind of was like a light bulb moment for me because just putting down words um, that you want to accomplish made it so much easier than trying to answer or, or create like this question. And when she said, I was like a Mad Lib, I was like, oh, my kids do Mad Libs all the time and things like that. So it was like, ah, oh, perfect. I get that. That helps because I'm not trying to focus on solving a problem. I think we are all problem solvers in many ways, and we are put into problem solving roles. And so we want to ask a question to solve a problem. And so here, when it's more of like a Mad Lib type, you know, fun and making it almost kind of fun, um, just coming up, brain, truly just brainstorming question or the, the not questions, the, the words you want to use, it was so much easier to then create that statement. Um, so thank you, Jamie. That was a real, for me, that was kind of a light bulb moment to make it simpler. So other thing that we didn't talk about much here, but is going down to who's going to be your attendees. Um, and so one other way to look at this is what are, what are the reasons why they're, they're coming to this table? Why are they dropping everything they're doing and showing up at this meeting? So what do they need to know, understand, or decide, and really making sure you hit the mark for all those stakeholders that you have identified. Um, and so if that, those are all the mixes that you have to have in consideration. Um, you know, you, you, each one of these may have their own agendas. And so you may, uh, what you came up with was how to cross those agendas um, across all of those. And maybe they want to find where their agenda fits with the overall actions that are happening here. So paying attention to that, when I go into facilitation design, I do think about those people that are coming to the table. What's it going to make it worth their time to be here? And um, so that's where I start with that foundation, the bookends. I like to call the rational experiential aim, the bookends of everything that we're doing. And that's why we're spending so much time on it here is because it is the bookends, right? And everything in between is getting you to that final equation of they're walking away with whatever we come up with in the experiential aim. They now know whatever we come up with from the rational aim. And as we pointed out in the first group, um, I talk about a foundation. So everything about this, the broader you make your rational aim, the broader your base, your foundation of what can come to the table and get and come out of this meeting. If you narrow it, it's your ideas of where it should go and you're losing the benefit of bringing multiple voices together. Keeping it broad will bring new ideas that you may not have thought of before. And, and feel like they have a place because they have a expertise that they're bringing that we hadn't thought of before. So, all right, Mad Lib, got something new to put in our um, thought process there, I like that. All right, group three, coming back together. Becca was in there with Diane, Kimberly, and Tangia. Yeah, so um, we are, the three of us, Kimberly and uh, Diane, we have all had uh, are in that stage where our groups are meeting. And so we just brainstormed what was actually happening, what progress has been made for each group. So you'll see where we listed out, you know, what was actually happening or has happened in each one of our groups uh, to kind of get an idea of trying to come up with a, a, a rational aim because each one of us are at different stages or, or experiencing different things at this point. Um, so we, we, we continue to brainstorm um, as far as a rational aim, like what, what do we want our team leaders to know? What do we want them to understand? And what do we want them to decide as far as trying to come up with a, a rational aim? Um, and we didn't solidify as a group what, what a rational, what rational aim we wanted to use, but that's kind of where we were brainstorming, like what, what, you know, individually, what did we want, you know, to happen when we met again with, with our team leaders. 
um, I did individually put a, a, a rational aim down based upon what uh, I was experiencing with my team leaders. And that was to develop a shared understanding of action steps and priorities to better utilize resources and maximize strengths of team members because that was kind of where they were when we met last time. So I think when we meet again, that's gonna be our focus is to uh, kind of see where they are in their action steps and what that's what, 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 what we need to do because they were switching team members and talking about strengths and, and this person we better over here. So when we meet again, it's kind of like we all need to know where everybody is and what we're actually, what is your actual goal and your action steps so that we don't overlap one another. But that was that was just what I came up with based upon what I was experiencing with my my group, and then we went on to uh, we did each one inner. Hang on, uh, yeah. Let's, I'm sorry. let's just have you know. I think this is great. And so with the other two that you brainstormed, how does this highlighted national um, aim kind of fit what your area is? Because it's generic enough. I think it will, Kimberly and. Um, Diane, do you have a thought on how that might fit some of what's happening for you? If we think about this is the, what we want people to know, understand, or decide, is that broad enough of an umbrella to fit what you have identified in your brainstorming of your groups? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, mine, to some degree, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, one of my groups have, has already, um, had their second, um, community event. Um, but for the most part, yes, to develop a shared understanding of action steps. Absolutely. Diana, I, we, I mean, that was just something that I thought of from my, from me experiencing with my team leaders, but I know Diane, uh, talk to us about her um, having participation and maybe needing to add additional people to some groups. So we talked about how she could go about getting people to participate in groups that were lacking participation or lacking team members. So Dan, what do you think? All right. Um, utilize our resources and Strengthen our team members, and I've, I have one team that doesn't have very many that needs more um, participation to help, you know, it's only two to three. So uh, I agree with that. What I'm trying to point out to you is you make these broad enough, they're really going to fit where people come, and it can be a design that can be used over and over again. If you're really looking to, um, get people back together and look at the action that we've had. That's a, inner, uh, um, a process that can happen many times. Anyone that's been part of strategic planning, you're gonna do this a lot of times. So really kind of understanding the action steps and prioritize how we're gonna use the resources at this point in time to really maximize who's showing up at the table. That is a nice global one that can be used no matter who's showing up, no matter what stage in the planning they're at. So that's what I'm trying to point out here. So good job, whether you knew you did it or not, <laughs> right on target there. So now let's go on down to that experiential aim. And even here, like I said, we didn't come up with a with an EA. Uh, we just all just kind of brainstormed what we felt would, would be the end result. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes when we start a, a facilitation, we don't always talk these out loud we use these as just kind of making sure we create space in our questions that they're gonna get some of these feels out of that conversation or being part of it. If you've gotten them a place where they feel empowered that they can make a decision to move forward, you might be asking the last question on a D level, on that decisional level question, what part are you going to take forward after this meeting? They now feel empowered to feel supported and encouraged. In what ways have you been supported in this project? In what ways do you need additional support? So your or your uh, reflective level questions may hit those things. You're, so you don't necessarily have to say your experiential aims, but you're gonna create questions as you fill out your design to kind of hit those marks. You always are gonna say what your rational aim is. Why are we here today? That's one that you're gonna say, welcome to our meeting. 
because we're here today because we really want to check in on and, and share our understanding where we're at with our action steps and find out what priorities we need to utilize to get our resources and our maximum strengths out of each of you showing up here today. So as we go into there, my first question is, you know, we want everyone to answer and that's your objective level question. So that's what we use these for, um, but yeah, good job. And then did you get to the attendees? Who's been historically excluded from these conversations? All right. That was a point oh. that I made for Diane because she was saying her group lacks attendees. And that was just another good place to bring up this question. We talked about power, power dynamics, but also inclusion. And so we spoke to, you know, even if they didn't attend your community priority action planning workshop, you can still reach out to them. That's what the summary report is for to help them feel caught up. But we wanna make sure we're being mindful. Who needs to be here? Who hasn't historically been a part of this conversation? Who hasn't? You know, been able to participate in ways that we need them to participate. Awesome work all the way around. I do believe we're at a point where you guys have not taken a break, right? You probably would like to do that. And Jack needs a break. So let's pause the recording and let's give you, um, tell what, what do we say after? Will that work? So this should look familiar. This is what Kelly um, showed you guys yesterday. And we talked a little bit more in detail about steps one and steps two. In the remainder of our time today, I want us to look at step three of this facilitation. So um, if you have seen that June training on your calendars for the 20th and the 22nd, um, you will be working with your small groups between now and then to finish filling out the form in the Google Doc that you started during the break time. Um, I want you to notice here these are not brainstorming sections. So this is an easy copy and paste from what you had come up with above. Again, continue to stick with that same topic throughout steps one, steps two, and steps three of this form. And I know there might be some similarities between what Kelly's group came up with a year ago and what your topic might be, but I really encourage you to not copy and paste anything off of what she may have sent out yesterday. Notice, the staffing here. So in June, this is going to be a team effort, including all people in your group. So we want you to contribute to the sections and we want you to feel comfortable speaking to the sections in June. So make sure that some of our stronger voices um, allow everybody to participate. And if you are one of the quieter members, please, you know, push yourself a little bit to contribute. Um, or ask some good questions so you do feel confident moving forward. Um, once you have figured out your rational experiential aim, your audience, and thinking through all those pieces in step one, you move to that agenda piece, kind of outlining if you were to truly facilitate this in real life, how long do you think that would take? Sometimes we uh, give it our best shot and then we might adjust timing saying, I know the capacity of my group is really only an hour, not two hours. So what do I need to adjust to um, make this a facilitation that I can be successful in facilitating with the audience I have selected? Then once you are confident in those areas, I want you to come down here, thinking through, if you are really facilitating this, what, what is the workup or the prep that you need before this meeting, maybe even a week in advance? What are some of those things that on the day of the meeting that you want to make sure that you do? If this is in person, that might be moving some tables around or getting some refreshments put together. If this is virtual, you might wanna make sure that your technology is working and your microphone and video can be seen by everybody or you might have polls um, to set up. Then you can see in the colored sections here that we're going off of the agenda above the Kasanya has selected 10 minutes to go through introductions. If you are assigned the introductions part, you might want to write out the script that you hope to talk about. You may even throw in an icebreaker and want to make a little bit longer for introductions if you've got some new members. Um, then you can see that Kelly here in orange listed her sections and she assigned it 20 minutes. Again, I highly encourage you guys to um, either write out a script of what you want to say, or as you can see here, she is touring findhelp.org 
Um, it looks like this group also developed a couple slides that they wanted to share to kind of introduce their topic or their pro problem to the group. You can see in the materials, she's got Google Slides and she's got a link here that make this really easy for her to access when they actually facilitated this in real life with the other champions. And then you can see we've got a community conversation. This is just an ORID or a focus conversation that the group worked together to design based off of the topic they had selected above. We required last year that everybody participate and facilitate in this so they can feel what it's like to have some people jump on a question and everybody answer. And then sometimes that awkward silence where maybe not everybody understood the question or it needed to be rephrased. So working together between now and June 20th and 22nd, this is kind of that level of detail that we're looking for in your individual groups. So come up with that set of questions. This whole section will actually be facilitated with the other champions pretending to be your community partners. I want to keep going down here so you can see that Shirley took the responsibility for doing a debrief, report out, and closing, and she assigned 15 minutes to that. So this is a reasonable facilitation for the group to, for any champion to be able to do on their own. Um, I also want to just show you another type of demonstration. So this is um, a facilitation guide for your upcoming training for um, the 25th for community health status reports. Uh, Jamie, I think is gonna be taking the lead on this one for you guys, but this is some of the things that we think about when we're designing this. So we know that we need to train you guys in updating community health status reports. That's the topic. We've got a, a goal or a rational aim of you know, reviewing the actual new template and training you guys on how to actually complete that. Experiential, we want you to feel confident. We wanna create a safe space. So when we're thinking through actually providing this learning to you, we're not just, here's the learning. We want you to feel comfortable engaging in that learning. And you can see our attendees are 21 champions and this is gonna be a review for 2020. We've got our specific date and time listed. This is a virtual training. And so all of that comes into play when we've got an agenda. And the agenda is going to be already set for your training. I did build out some of the RAs and EAs here, and I listed who is going to be speaking for each section. I just copied and pasted above that purpose or that rational aim. Again, this is the same template that we just reviewed from Kelly but this is filled out for one of our trainings for center staff. You can see also, we're thinking through days before the workshop, what do we need to do to be prepared? This is a virtual training. So generally we kind of hop on about 30 minutes prior and we say, what, who is responsible for what? Uh, looks like here our lead facilitator is planning to share the screen and advance slides. Our host is going to be opening it and providing housekeeping. This is a lot more in detail then we're going to expect you guys to do. But we do want you to think through what are the necessary steps to make you feel prepared to facilitate the conversation that's going to be held. Um, one thing that we do like to list is breakout rooms. So in the event that you want to be intentional about who is in which group, we have this listed here. So our host is going to use this to design those breakout rooms ahead of time so they're not scrambling in the background and kind of starting to sweat. You can see here that this data sharing would kind of be like the setting this stage. What information does the group need to know to engage fully in the conversation? There's a small group breakout time for everybody to practice. And then we have a large group discussion. And this again is, is an ORID conversation. And so we list all of those questions here that will then take us to a debrief, next steps, and closing, wrapping up the conversation so that everybody feels like the content um, you know, has been covered. They have been able to provide feedback to the topic that you know, was discussed and um, everybody understands some of those next steps. So this is what you guys are going to be doing as homework. 
that step three. Um, I do want to show really briefly, this is kind of, and I understand this isn't uh, in our presenter mode right now, but this is what we're going to be doing um, in June. So each group, each small group you have worked with today is going to be assigned to review the purpose, the rational aim, the audience and the participants that they have selected for this conversation. Um, we have some general timing on here to kind of keep it short and sweet so we can all hear each other speak. We want to review that agenda you have come up with. We want to provide some brief highlights that might set the stage or the context for your specific topic, sharing a little bit of information. Some of our groups have put together slides in the past to kind of help uh, set the stage for the topic and some of them just speak. Either one of those is fine. And then we have you facilitate an ORID conversation and that's that focused conversation format. Um, each of you needs to have a speaking part in this time. Um, say you have a group of four, you can split that up however you want to, but we want everybody to be able to ask at least one of the questions in the focus conversation. And then you're going to close it out. We as listeners who are not a part of your small group will help answer the questions and provide feedback as if we were community partners engaging in this conversation in real life. And Hugh Life uh, provides that subject matter expertise so they can give us some um, constructive feedback on how we can improve our, our facilitation technique or maybe our questions next time we wanna facilitate this with some real community partners. So that is kind of the next step for this work together. Um, we do realize that this is a large ask. And so we want to break this up into a couple smaller bites. So you should all already have on your calendars. June 1st, it is a mandatory Q&A to practice what you have been working together with your partners. So by June 1st, we require that you have those steps one and two completed. If you did not get through that today, please set time between now and then with your partners to figure that out. You also can update any of the wording if you think about something else between now and then that you want to add um, to make this maybe a more robust or a more realistic um, facilitation for you and your partners. Then after we kind of talked through all of that together on the first, you have from the first to the 20th to write out that facilitation script. And we want that to be truly a group effort. We know that some of you are more comfortable than others with this, but please all work together, utilizing your books, um, utilizing each other to design this conversation. And if you have any questions between now and then, please reach out to us. We are resources and we want to help. Just a point of clarification, June 1st, they just need to complete today's work. By June 20th, they yeah. will to complete step three. Yes, and be ready to facilitate it. So that might involve you actually practicing this together. <laughs> I would highly encourage it. So do I take uh, one of my three groups and um, utilize the intake form or do I use each of my groups? No, this is not you and your real community partners. This is you and your breakout group people. So this is other champions. So this is a very, very safe place. We're just learning right now. When we have actually finished this training on the 20th of June, feel free to use this with your community partners, but let's start with our, our champions. Totally a role play, Kimberly. Yes. What other questions we have? So do I understand that the ones that were in group three, we will contact each other. One yes. person has said that we'll all have our own Zoom meeting. Do it with your small group that you worked with in the breakout group. Right. So whoever wants to take the lead on scheduling that time together, or you could say, we're all just going to join a Q&A on next Tuesday morning together. And then you don't have to have your own Zoom account or anything. Any other questions? I had to step out, I apologize. But um, do we have a blank intake form? Like, do we have an, a, pres a copy of the presentation? We're sending all of that out following today's training, but we want you to continue in the Google document that you've started working today. Okay. And yep, those links will be sent out as well. Okay, thanks. 
think Ms. Megan actually gets to talk for a bit. I would love to close us out. So we are going to go around. Let's hear from everybody um, and think back, you know, through today and the first day of this session. Um, so what is one image activity or conversation that you recall from this facilitation design sessions one and two? Uh, let's go ahead and uh, hear from Megan, Tangia, and then Sue Ellen. Sorry, you said, sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, just a, what's an image, an activity, a conversation, something you recall from the facilitation design sessions this week? I mean, all of it's kind of new to me because I'm still new to all the, the role because I just started this basically in January. So um, all of it's kind of new. All of it's sticking out. All right. Thank you, Tangia, Sue Ellen, and Kimberly. Homework. I see it. All right. <laughs> Sue Ellen, Kimberly, Lanaya. Um, I would say just really nailing down those rational and experiential uh, aims. Thanks, Sue Ellen, Kimberly, Lanaya, Diane. Uh, practicing the intake form. Thank you, Lanaya, Diane, Tiffin. Uh, I would say the same thing. Practicing the facilitation and intake form was really helpful. Thank you, Diane, Tiffin, Donna. I would say the brainstorming, um, trying to come up with the rational aims. Thanks, Diane, Tiffin, Donna, Kathy. Mad libs. Stephen, Donna, Kathy, Gwendolyn, if she's still here. Learning about the different aims and brainstorming, that was highlights. Thank you. Kathy, Gwendolyn, Vinay. Um, I would say making sure when you're um, brainstorming for your rational aim that you keep it high level and not try to uh, solve what your rational aim is because you don't want to pigeonhole what your options are for your participants. Uh, thanks, Kathy. Gwendolyn, Vinay, Rachel. Gwendolyn, are you still here? I am. Oh, I there we are. Kathy and then Gwendolyn. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, good. Um, the part that um, I lost my thought a minute, uh, the intake form was what was interesting because I saw my name down there and I was trying to recall because I usually keep a copy of everything. So the intake form along with the homework and the state and the state of course is what sticks out with me. Thanks, Gwendolyn, Vinay, okay. Vinay, Rachel, and Brija. I'm sorry, I'm kind of in and out, but um I think my takeaway today would be the using the aims, the E's and the, a, the E and the A as kind of a roadmap to guide the conversation to kind of give you a direction on which questions to ask. And Thanks I'm to me. Uh, Rachel and Brija Becca. Um, the, the book, The Art of Focus Conversation, um, using that as a resource and tool and to remember that it's a really good resource and uh, a lot of great information in there. Thank you, Rachel. And Brigia, Becca, Jamie. I say um, we've used these same topics before, so I really enjoy y'all's approach on how you um, figure out like the brainstorming portion of each topic. It's completely different than the direction that cohort 2020 went. So I really enjoy kind of listening to y'all's thought process. Thank you, Becca, Jamie, Karen. <clears throat> The conversation that stood out to me was from today, getting to hear um, the community champions in my group talk about what progress has been made. And it definitely got me excited because I love to hear when things are moving forward and I'm complete. Thanks, Becca. Uh, Jamie, Karen, Robbie. Um, I think one of the things today that stood out was that knowing that 
or a reminder that these events, like while we're learning a skill here also, like Tiffin and Lanaya are sort of in the same space and they were able, you know, Lanaya was able to share some of the information, like some of the things that she's doing that was a good resource for Tiffin in, you know, setting up these meetings. And so it's a, it's also an opportunity for them to share their lessons learned and things like that as we go through this um, for the more practical work as well. So um, that's, that was, that really stood out to me in our breakout room today. So with that, I'm complete. Thanks, Jamie, Karen, and Robbie. I think it's just the guide rails of the aims. I don't think we can review them too many times. I think it really helps uh, give us direction and confidence moving forward. Thanks, Karen and Robbie. Um, actually, it's the same as Tiff and the Mad Libs. I've never thought of it that way. And those were something that um, I really enjoyed as a kid. Still do. Uh, so that's it. Thanks, Robbie. So just open it up here to anyone. Go ahead and share um, as you feel inspired to do so, but what was helpful about today's session? For me, it was um, small nuggets of, of ideas being used to, to come up with your RA and your EA. Um, you know, like some, when you went into breakout and came back, you know, of, um, some of the resource um, staff was giving little bits of nuggets on how to come up with it. So I wrote down a lot of that, like somebody was saying, you know, use verbs and, and those type of things. So that was helpful for me. Well, I would say um, just a champion's openness during this entire process, especially with them sharing like, okay, sometimes I do struggle with rational experiential aims. So we definitely take note of all the things you all are saying you're struggling with, even with some of the champions mentioning that there might be some struggle with, struggle with implementation. So we're definitely taking note of that and we will be reaching out just to see how that is going. So if you all have any type of struggles as you go through this implementation process, don't forget that we are a resource source and you can definitely reach out to us. How about where are you still feeling challenged or what part of this uh, facilitation design do you find uh, really challenging? I, I think for me <clears throat> it's um, a predetermination of what I think the outcome should be and being able to separate that so when you're working with a group and you're facilitating, it can be extremely collaborative and you're not directing where you want the conversation to go. That sometimes can be difficult when you're switching gears from maybe your day-to-day -day job. Um, you know, if you know that the outcome has to be X, but in, you're switching over to facilitating and you need to make sure that you get the whys. I guess that's the easiest way for me to explain that. Where else do you feel challenged? I would agree with Kathy. I think, you know, just having gone through the CPAPW, you know, we are all part of our communities as well. And, you know, working within our clinics or hospitals. And then, um, you know, it's easy to get lost from the trying to be that active participant from the facilitation because you hear these things and you may have your ideas or thoughts or, you know, and trying to switch that gear from asking a question, again, that is unbiased, truly a facilitation question um, to that of, you know, and helping to truly facilitate and, and guide um, versus engaging. And I think that sometimes is the hardest um, to do in a community champion role because many of us are fully engaged within our work roles and our communities and then to take on this role. Um, so I, I, I think that it's, it is a challenge um, because many of us are pulled from our day-to-day -day roles into this where our day-to-day -day role is to be fully engaged with the patients or within the hospital or the clinic. And then now we are to be not engaged, so to speak, and to be a facilitator. And turning that switch on and off is, is difficult at times. Um, and so I think that is a, a, a learning curve for, I think, I believe for many of us in this room to, to do that. So, so I have a question for, for the, the, um, 
the uh, facilitators that have been facilitators. Uh, how do you get a facilitator to not facilitate during your meeting? Just keep asking questions. Okay, because I, I have I have a couple of in in uh, of my team leaders that have made it known to me that they're aware of what I'm doing, and so when I meet with them, I can tell that they're there's some intertwining with them facilitating on their end, trying to do something, but it's kind of interfering with what I'm trying to do. So I do have to keep like redirecting and keep That's asking right. my question to try yes. to get. Just so steps into your space and what do others think so you know if someone's trying to say guide the conversation at that point you bring it back and open it up to the rest of the, the group and so your job is to keep the needle in your hand and weaving it through the whole group and so if someone's coming in with their own question their own agenda and what do others think on this what are ideas that are surfacing as um you know Bob is exploring this right now with us. I think it's also nice to kind of lay it on thick, Angie. Like I intentionally invited this whole group here because of your wealth of knowledge and experience interacting with the community. And while I know you have other skill sets today, I want to hear your voice related to this topic. Yeah. I think too, giving them a role like it doesn't have to be the facilitator role, but maybe a role that helps them feel empowered. Like, you know, I, I'm really struggling to make sure I'm capturing what everyone is saying. Can you please help me make sure this gets written down or that I'm hearing this correctly? Just something to think about. Okay, because I, I, I don't know if I was correct in doing it, but I kind of like, uh, like you guys did kind of like specifically said, okay, now it's, let's go to, you know, Becca, Donna, and whoever to, to keep that, to keep her from, I guess, uh, taking all of the air out the room to, uh, so that everybody else could have a chance to, uh, to speak and get their word in. Good question. Let's uh, hear from a few folks. What new insights did you gain about facilitation design this week? Uh, for me, it was just making sure all your, all your questions are being answered. So it was pretty easy once in my group, once we looked at, okay, let's see if we're answering all these questions and we were able to gain a flow. So, And having a tool available and completed ahead of time helps to reduce your anxiety and, and feel more prepared. Other new insights. What difference will this make for you moving forward? I think I'll be a better facilitator, hopefully. We have a lot of tools at our hands that we can use. Yes, you do. And having this intake form as part of your toolbox now, what, what difference will having this intake form and going through this process make for you as facilitators? I think going back to the book and looking that um, every scenario kind of has a different format that you should take into consideration. I think sometimes you get into a rut of just recycling what you know um, and sometimes not taking the time to think truly about what the scenario is of the meeting that you're going to facilitate. Um, I know that from my past experiences, it was just regurgitate, regurgitate, regurgitate for the most part. And I think that that's one thing that I have taken a lot from this is um, truly different scenarios do have um, different approaches that you should look at. And we do that, I think, innately in some, some, some cases, like if you're a supervisor or a manager, you may discuss you know, meetings in a different way. But to really think through that in a, in a more structured um, way, um, so I think you know, I, I kind of forget about the book, but then each time we talk about it and I bring it out, I'm kind of reminded like, oh, wow, there really are some different ways to think through this. Um, so I think that's like, I need to be better at really using that as like a textbook, like a, as something to pull out in those different scenarios. Um, and that there's, there really are different ways to think through these meetings uh, than just regurg regurgitating what you have always done.
finally, let's just a couple of key takeaways from folks. What are you walking away with? So go ahead. Go ahead. Diane, then Kathy. I would say use uh, my book. Um, I haven't utilized that book, and I think that would help me a lot in, uh, with my team meetings. Thanks. And Kathy, were you going to speak to? Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, going into the first day on Tuesday, um, there's some apprehension because I didn't understand where we were going with this and how it was going to conclude, I guess. And then today, the second half of it, it kind of put it all together. Um, so that that's a big takeaway. I mean, I, th I don't know if it would have made a difference if I knew like a summary of what to expect. Um, maybe then it would have been a little bit more pre-planned and prepared and that's not what was wanted or needed. So um, I guess just being able to conclude that today, put it together, and now being able to move into the group project will be, um, it's not gonna be easy, but it's gonna be a lot more um, clear to, to the outcome. All right, well, Robbie, I'm gonna hand it back over to you to close us out. Awesome, thank you. I will share my screen here. You wanna do the polling first, Robbie? Yes, thank Just you. Just so we don't lose anybody who may have to hop off. All right, so there should be three questions. Um, and we have 10 possible responses. So after we get all 10, I'll end that and start in on my upcoming activities. Uh, this looks like a lot because it is a lot, but it's all exciting stuff um, because this goes uh, May through September. So it is for the next few months. Um, we have our mandatory community health status report update learning collaborative on the 25th at nine. Um, we also have some homework due on June 1st, and that's to just complete your first and second sections of the facilitation development template with your small group. Again, bring that to the Q&A and we'll talk more further there. Um, we also have a Q&A <laughs> on June 1st to talk through that develop, uh, facilitation development template. And then we have our um, so, uh, facilitation development and peer mentoring sessions one and two on June 20th and 22nd at nine. Um, and then we also have a community connect celebration learning collaborative on July 19th at nine. And then um, just some more things over the next couple months, um, action planning and your implementation that you've been doing. Um, just keep plugging away at that. And we will also be holding community connect celebration events. Um, then we also have our summit in Memphis, September 13th and 14th. And then just wanted to really hit home um, our Q&A work times that we have on Tuesdays at 10 and Thursdays at 9. Stop by with any questions that you have, um, any comments, concerns, we're here for you. Um, if, that, if either of those times don't work, please reach out to us. Um, I will share our entire team's uh, contact information but you can always get a hold of us as well at just at drchsd-program at rollcenter.org. And that is all I have. Karen, did I miss anything? I did add into the chat box, Robbie, just the overall evaluation for the last, uh, well, the two days of learning that we've had this week. Um, your honest feedback really helps us direct any learning that we provide and help us sometime develop new learning if um, we see some gaps or some additional questions that are asked. So please take the time to fill that out. Uh, if we don't see high enough numbers, you're gonna see another reminder email tomorrow morning to fill that out. I think that is everything. We appreciate your time and participation and please reach out to us if you've got questions. Nice work everyone today. All right, thanks everyone.